Okay, so as Romy said, um, there's a lot of stuff going on. Just this morning, I realised now I've got to use Grunt, I've got to design for TVs, and I've got six new APIs I need to learn. So <laughs> this goes up. So basically, I'll start off with a bit about me. Not it's just to give you a bit of background to see where I come from. So uh, it's basically so you realise how little time most of us have, and not just myself. Um, so I sort of started out about 2000 building websites. Um, I'm Married with three kids. Uh, I've always worked in an agency, which I know a lot of people might frown upon, but I quite like it. I'm a weird one, and I love doing my job, um, which I think everyone here does, because you probably otherwise wouldn't be here on a Saturday learning about all this stuff. Um, so when I started, um, all those years ago, um, I was doing all this kind of stuff, uh, which is kind of everything. It was me and the other guy who employed me, and we were in a little office above a car dealership and we had our own server rack in the corner which had our DNS server in, our email server in, two web servers and we were on a DSL line hosting all that stuff, which was brilliant. Um, so we kind of did pretty much everything under the sun and I'd come straight out of uni, got this job within sort of six months of leaving, I'd done some database stuff in between and then realised that, oh, after doing all that education, I just want to build web stuff. So I just wanted to be a web developer and moved on to another agency where that was the sole thing. And I'll be doing back end stuff, front end stuff, database design. And then they even brave enough, probably, to let me go out and see clients on my own. It was crazy stuff. Um, and then sort of through to today, um, where I have a job title that doesn't really mean anything to anyone outside the industry. Um, and I work at an agency in Buckingham called BDA. Um, basically, all that means is I do this stuff. Um, I sort of, in a position where I'm between the designer, I'm always working with the designer every day, and I probably do less with the other devs because I'm always working with him, prototyping stuff. Uh, working with clients more and then sort of handing stuff over to the guys who are much cleverer than me, like everyone else in here. Um, so all it is is a fancy word for me drawing on walls and not doing much else. Um, so over those years, obviously, a lot of stuff changed. And uh, how this sort of talk came about was, um, well, what I will talk about is how this came about. Um, It'll go through sort of how uh, you have so many streams of information to pull from, to learn from. Um, how I sort of changed the way I looked at it all, so I felt that I could deal with everything because there's just so much. And hopefully how you can do the same. So back in April, I think it was, um, I was sort of doing a stupid thing on Twitter saying, oh yeah, maybe I should do a talk as well. And then 10 people say, yes, you should. And then you have to do it. Um, so I ended up with like a five minute spot at a, a local thing uh, in Milton Keynes, fairly local. Uh, and it wasn't going to be anything about this. I wanted to talk about workflows and processes, which obviously Sean's just spoken about. Um, responsive deliverables and repurposing of your tools. And as I was researching this, I had up until about June when the talk was due. Um, so I went out and did some research, and just before I'd started, there'd been this conference uh, down here, which unfortunately I couldn't go to, but one of my colleagues went to and filled me in on how much amazing stuff I'd missed. But it sort of covered all the workflows process, how people were working with stuff, and how no one had figured it out yet, and that we were, it was just a continuous conversation everyone was moving along with. Uh, then we moved on with responsive deliverables and people were writing about that. Dave Rupert from Paravel did a lovely bit where he just sort of lists out all the stuff they broke down so they could hand over to their client and sign off these individual things for responsive projects because it was just a nightmare to sort of go, here's a screenshot, look at that, lovely. Um, so he'd break it down into components so they'd sign off navigation grids and buttons and stuff like that. Uh, the strategy of it, so responsive images, typography, uh, accessibility and then the individual layout, so your wireframes of your homepage and articles and, and stuff like that. 
And then the repurposing of your tools, people are starting writing about that as well. I had a very big <coughs> issue with people who just only said, well, everyone can design in the browser now, so we'll get rid of Photoshop. It's like people have spent 10, 15 years getting really good at using that tool, and now we're going to chuck, chuck it out the window. That's just a stupid idea in my book, really. Um, so people had sort of started investigating ways that you could change the way you work to sort of like build these sort of individual deliverables for a responsive site. Um, so basically all the stuff I wanted to talk about had been covered and it was about two weeks before the talk that I realised I can't really do this because everyone's already done it and I'm just going to be repeating the same stuff. Um, so I didn't really know what to do. I had this feeling that everything was going so fast that if I wanted to talk about it, I'd have to book up months in advance. By the time I got there, it'd be sort of out of date and you wouldn't be able to say about it. Or at least other people would have heard about it. So this is where the idea of this talk came about. So audience participation time. Um, it's nothing major. It's just a show of hands. So I can do this one of two ways. So I'll probably go the way of who feels like they cannot keep up with everything. They've got too much to learn. That's loads and loads of people. That's really good. This is not a pointless talk. It's good. Um, who didn't put their hands up and think they can keep up with everything? Two, three. Three liars in the audience. That's fine. <laughs> um, okay, so everyone else who put their hands up first, don't worry, because I found the answer. This site popped up two weeks before I was doing my uh, little five-minute version of this. And it was this site. I don't know if anyone might have seen it, but it's how to keep up to date with front-end technologies. And I thought, brilliant. Don't have to do it. I'll just put this site on the slides, and I can just walk through it, and then everyone's fine. Um, so on this site, it tries to solve a few problems. So it basically gives you avenues for learning. It tells you who you should be following on Twitter. It lists about 78 people on there. It's not a completely unmanageable number. Um, I probably follow about 500, which I'm really trying to cut down at the minute. Um, but it's, it's a manageable stream of information. You can sort of pick out the stuff that you need to. So 78 for me was not bad. And not all those people are going to be people doing stuff that you need to worry about. If, you, if you're doing mainly JavaScript stuff, you're not going to be want to follow someone who's just doing design stuff, things like that. Um, has a list of new sites, blogs and podcasts. There's 41 of these at the last time I counted. Again, that's a fairly manageable amount. You can have those coming via your RSS feeds into your iPhone app or whatever you need for podcasts. It listed a bunch of conferences to attend, 46 of them. <laughs> and there's only 52 weeks in the year. So it, I go to loads. I, generally, I'm at at least one a month because I just like to get away from my family and kids. That's not true. Um, <laughs> Oh, no, my wife's going to see this as well. Oh, no. Um, but that's just, it's just a huge amount of stuff, and uh, I'll, get on to, I'll get on to those a bit later anyway. Um, but one thing that was really good uh, was right down at the bottom, hidden away, unfortunately, I thought, uh, is advice from, for finding your own sources from the people who are sort of listening to it that asked opinions of uh, a few of those guys and girls on how they manage their streams of information, how they keep up to the date with the stuff that they do on a daily basis. So did it really solve my problems? No, not really. Um, but like I said, it gives us great avenues through which you can sort of learn and keep up with stuff. So we're pulling in loads of information that we can learn from. So the question that sort of came from that for me was how do I filter all that stuff and be able to get through it? Um, so all the articles, uh, all the written stuff, I uh, generally, if I find them and I think they're going to be used, I save them into pocket don't necessarily need read them straight away or just scan them and think, yes, I'll keep hold of that. And at the moment, I've got over 700 articles in there. <laughs> None of them are archived. They're all just in there and tagged and stuff. And so I started doing some very basic maths. If you imagine that when I, when I write an article, I sort of aim for 700 words, which is about three, three and a half minutes worth of reading. So on average, I'd say an article would say was about five minutes. So I've got about 58 hours of reading to do there. Uh, then there's the podcasts. Um, there was a point where I had over 100 in there. That was just ridiculous. But at the moment, I've got about 65 of unlistened ones. Uh, and obviously, they'll either come out weekly or monthly, depending on uh, who's doing what. Um, 
so they range from about half an hour to an hour roughly in length, so I average that out about 45 minutes, which means I've got 50 hours of podcasts to listen to. So I thought, how, how the hell am I going to listen to all that stuff and read all that stuff and, and get it into my tiny little brain of mine? Um, so I tried to work it out. Um, I figured that perhaps I could do an hour a day, every working day. Weekends are mine, we'll leave those. Uh, I drive to work, takes half an hour, so one way, there or back, I'll listen to a podcast rather than the radio or music or whatever, and half an hour in my lunch, I'll read through some stuff. Uh, if I did that, it'd take me five months to get through all that stuff, uh, and by the time I'd done that, that's pointless anyway, because I'd be five months behind again with all the other stuff that I've collected, so there's just no point in bothering. Um, so that's just the content that's coming through in terms of news, blogs, and stuff like that. Then we've got Twitter. Um, as I said, I've got about 500 people who I follow on there at the moment, which I really need to cut down. There's really good, useful stuff. There's really bad, inane, rele irrelevant chat, which is also good, but not in a productive sense. Um, relevant stuff to me, stuff that's irrelevant. Um, loads of really great insights, loads of good links to articles, surrounded by a hell of a lot of noise. Um, so... This constant feed of stuff can just be truly overwhelming. Admittedly, you just have this one window that's there and feeding it out, but the problem is that tiny window makes you forget. So this is me, and then this is all the people I follow on Twitter, and these aren't representative brain sizes. Oh, no, that's, that is no way relevant to the others. It's just... It's very, very easy to forget that when you've got this little window and all this information flowing through with all these genius ideas and people who are amazing at their jobs and really pushing things forward in terms of technology and the way we work and everything else, that you feel like all that stuff that's come through there should be in my head as well. And you just have to try and remember that, that you, you can't fit 500 brains into your own brain. It just doesn't work that way. Um, so conferences all those 46 of them that there were, there's so many of them. Um, it's both a good and a bad thing. Um, the fact that there's so many is that they're popping up all over the place, you can get to them easier, but then you've just got, you, you're kind of spoilt for choice. You need to find the ones that are probably going to be more relevant to you, that are going to have the right topics to you. So when you come to a JavaScript conference and you've got a guy talking about how we can't do all the stuff that you're doing, it's probably not ideal. Um, they can also cost quite a lot. Um, some of them can last over three days uh, they'll have a workshop as well so you have to pay for both the conference and the workshop then you have to travel to get there so you have to pay for your hotel you have to pay for your train or flights or whatever else you might be doing then you've got to buy your food when you get there unless you've got some kind of amazing portable fridge or something um, so it's just really expensive in some cases some of them it's not Free ones that are nearby, it's only going to cost you travel. Get to those as many as you can. Support the local ones, because um, there's some brilliant ones out there. Um, but then sort of an aside from the cost of it is getting the time off. If you work for yourself, it's also a cost. If you don't work for yourself, you've got to convince someone that it's worthwhile you going to this while you're not making them money. Um, and that can be difficult, and that's why you have to convince the boss that it is. Uh, and sometimes, obviously, when that bosses yourself, you still have to convince yourself if it is worth your time being out of the office, being there, doing the stuff that you should be doing to make the money that you're going to be losing by spending on that and not making money at the same time. So it's kind of a double loss. So that kind of covers everything on that list. But for me, that was missing something. Uh, and we just had a, a great talk on one of them. Uh, tools. It doesn't say... <coughs> about all these different things that we use, and these are just ones that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, all different code editors you can use, libraries, frameworks, preprocessors, typography, boy plates, all this stuff. So now I've got to learn grunt for task running. I've got uh, code editors started using Sublime last year, and I have no idea what all the shortcuts do. Uh, it just blows my mind. And I've got a guy who sat there opposite, he spent a weekend just learning it, and then just comes over and says, oh, yeah, you just did, yeah, thanks. I didn't know what you just did there, but it's worked. So you can now come over and do that for me every time. Um, <laughs> libraries, people, the, the big thing is now, like the task runners, libraries, frameworks,
people build their own stuff now, so you have tools to build tools to do your work, uh, which just means that there's just this huge flood of stuff. Um, so obviously Grunt is now one of them, and um, like Sean said, there's now 1,500 plus, was it, of all those plugins in there, and they're getting added daily. It's like, that's a full-time job, just like every time you have to go on once a day just to keep up with just Grunt and not all the rest of the stuff that you probably have to do with work. So it kind of blows my mind. It's my favourite thing ever. I love it. Mind exploding with all that stuff. Um, so it just, how do you keep up with all that stuff? And we can do the very short answer in that you can't, and then I can finish and go home. Um, but I won't do that. I'm going to drag you all down with me down this horrible path <laughs> of this looking like a sad dog. Um, so these are, uh, this is where it's slightly different to sort of like technical talks where I say, here you go, here's how I felt, and it all gets a bit touchy-feely. Um, I've been threatened by the knowledge of others quite a lot. Uh, I'm 34 years old. I've been doing it, like I said, for sort of 13 plus years, probably almost to the day, in fact. Um, and I have people come along, uh, new guys come and work with us, and there's a guy I sit opposite of me now. He's 22, and when he joined, he knows all the same stuff that I do. All that stuff I've taken 12 years, 13 years learning, and he knows it all. Um, and it's really depressing. So that's not fair. <laughs> I've worked my absolute butt off to get that done, and he just come along and he knows it all, and it's all fine. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff to be said for experience, so always remember that. <laughs> um, so as a result of this, you, even like um, people on Twitter, you'll just see all those people, again, that window of that small window of information, everything flying at you, um, it just blows your mind how much other people know. Uh, and as a result of all that stuff, you put yourself under a lot of pressure to learn. So I'd be getting up in the morning, getting all the kids ready, they'd go to school. Let's see, this is where the background thing comes in useful because I told you about my kids and stuff. So get them ready for school, then I'd go off to work, I'd do the work, probably listen to half-hour podcast on the way to work, do the half-hour reading, try and get rid of those five months that I'm behind on. Um, afternoon of work, get home, dinner with family, get them to bed, even if they won't go to bed, just put them in bed anyway. Um, hopefully spend a little bit of time with my wife if she isn't knackered from the kids. Um, and then it's probably, say, 10 o'clock, and then I'll try and do loads of stuff from like 10 till either midnight or 2 in the morning, depending on how much chocolate milk I can drink. Um, and it'll tire you out. It'll really stress you out. You'll just basically drag yourself very far down into this horrible place where you really don't need to be. Um, as, but when you can get out of that, when you've actually got something out of that and you learn something good and tell the world about it, People will say, oh, well, I did that ages ago. I, was, <laughs> I did my first site using SAS, uh, and we launched it in January. I was so chuffed, and it was a horrible, bloated mess of CSS because I didn't understand it, but I'd used it, so it was awesome. Um, I put it up there, and loads of people come back saying, oh, yeah, brilliant, well done, well done. And just one person on Twitter says, really? You've only just started using it now? I was doing that like a year ago. Well, you're horrible. And now I'm curled up in a ball, rocking in the corner and crying. Um, so it, and it makes you doubt your own abilities. So then you sit there all depressed, going, oh, perhaps I should have gone and learned all this stuff and I oh, couldn't fit it in, but I tried anyway. Um, but it's okay, because you don't have to do that. Uh, this is not the part where now, now you're all my children and say, now I've done this before, so you don't have to. It's, it's not to do that. Um, it's... Just that these people, all these, all, these, uh, <laughs> all these young people out there, there's always somebody younger. <laughs> I've realised this because you get older and you have kids and they grow up and they're going to replace you. Uh, that sounds really depressing. <laughs> because um, all, the, all these kids, so like the guy I work with who's 22 and he's awesome with his stuff, he's going to come along and they're going to be better because he's got more time. He hasn't got a family and kids and he hasn't got loads of other stuff to do. He sort of rents his house, he goes home and he just does loads of coding stuff because he can. And he just really wants to. He's hungry for it. He wants to learn all this stuff and they want to do that. Um, the big problem is when you get someone who's younger and hungrier, they do stuff with things that they've made that you've never heard of, which becomes awesome and is just, yeah, blows my mind. 
Um, so that's the dangerous combination. So when these people come along, and you're my age, and you're all depressed and self-loathing and hating all the people who are really clever, you've got two choices. You can compete with them by trying to learn everything you can. So if you do go down one sort of narrow road where you're sort of like, I want to specialise in this one thing, and you really go for it, that's, that's great, but do that. Don't try and compete with everyone on every front. 